are these people? But we talked a lot about the college protests. Um, we covered what happened at UCLA. We covered what happened at Columbia, of course. Right. We covered what happened at Indiana. Remember when they had the snipers on the roof at Indiana University? Yes. So crazy. All right. Um, but so this guy, Steven Semler, he's got a substack called Polygraph, and I found it through one of the aggregator like sites. Polygraph is great. Yep. So I came across it, it too. Stephen bring, brings the numbers and he's looking at, well, what percentage of the college protests, the campus protests were peaceful? Now, there are some caveats and some stars here. And I, I read this, um, read through this to make sure, you know, what is he talking about with his numbers? And it's actually a little bit yeah, skewed, but you'll, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So, you know, if you can support independent media, he is also an independent researcher. Uh, he got attacked. His name got in a New York New York Times article talking about the pier, which isn't working, which is really cool. And he wrote that in, in a responsible statecraft essay. But he writes up like, what's the situation here that both Jill and Joe Biden say that these campus protests are violent? But his numbers show that more than 98 percent of the Gaza protests at U.S. colleges and universities have been peaceful. I, I don't think that's I believe that. it. I don't think that's much of a surprise. Oh, yeah, by the way, most of the ones that were in peaceful were because of police or pro-Israel counter protesters. Infiltrators. Yeah. As as George Carlin says, I'm going to repeat that again because that sounds vaguely important. Most of the ones that were in peaceful were because of police or pro-Israel counter protesters. Stephen looked at 1,205 U.S. campus protests between October 7th and May 24th. These were recorded and coded by Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, which is ACLED, amazing, which collects data on all reported political violence and protest events around the world. That's a cool organization, but of course, I think it's got its biases. Um, and of course, the, sure. now the Guardian, we fucked the Guardian for selling out Julian Assange, free Julian Assange. The and Guardian, Glenn Greenwald. And Glenn, well, yeah, and and he sold. They sold out Glenn too. Yep. Uh, yep. Guardian featured Ackled's data last month to show that 97 percent of the campus demonstrations from April 18th to May 3rd, just over a two week period, were peaceful. He says I bothered doing my own analysis because I wanted the largest sample size possible and a closer look at the protests. It's uh, coded as violent, right? So. He says only 22 of the 1,205 were even coded as violent. That's a almost nothing number. That's a rounding error, right? So what the Biden administration lied to you? No way, no way. <laughs> right. So police intervene. Uh, so uh, of the twenty, only twenty-two. This number refers to when the protesters themselves behave violently. If it included cases where police and pro-Israel counter protesters sought out and harmed the protesters the number would be much higher. It's a of, great American tradition. Of course. Well, okay. That, that, thank you, Tim Dillon. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> it's uh, a great American tradition. It is. It is a great American tradition, I guess, for the police to, to break up protests and cause violence where, where we're at. It is. Um, yeah. So police intervened in campus protests 135 times. And in 121 of them, the protests weren't categorized as violent demonstrations even when the police use violence against protesters. Hmm. So it's it, always the police. It's always the cops that are bringing the violence. How many, I mean, we've seen it for, for years now, for years, you know, it doesn't matter if it was black lives matter or if it was Antifa or if it was uh, pro Palestinian, the cops get out there. They're out there for one reason. And that is to beat you down into submission. And you know, if they're in the mood to arrest you, well, then you might get arrested or they'll just beat you. Unbelievable. Ugh. That's, that's the police for you. We love the cops. Yeah, support your cops. Uh-huh. But his key takeaway, again, that even if they use shooting protesters with rubber bullets and making mass arrests didn't qualify as a violent demonstration unless some protesters decided to forcefully resist. 
<laughs> oh, jeez. Holy shit. Forceful, forcefully by sitting down on the ground, right? I bet you they're talking about those college professors, those ethic college professors they arrested. Holy shit. A key takeaway was that the campus protesters were far more likely to demonstrate restraint than commit violence, even if someone was being violent toward them. And another key takeaway is that campus protests pretty much only became violent after counter protesters or the police showed up. It was like it was like hippie communes. They were. It fucking... was the flag in the eye. That, you remember the flag in the eye? Oh I yeah, was she was stabbed in the eye with a flag. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, she was walking by somebody in a line and she bumped into them, and he happened to poke her near the eye, and she was fine the next day, but stabbed in the eye. Everybody be getting stabbed in the eye, right? So everything is hyper exaggerated, but without either of those powder parties imposing themselves on the protesters, Steve found just two instances of violence demonstrations, and the violence was directed at inanimate objects, computers, and windows. In one of those cases, very famously, p police later arrived and inflicted far more harm on the students than the students did to the windows. Uh, that's the police raid on, on Heinz Hall, of course, in Columbia. Right. And then right. and then we've got uh, that in most of the other 20 cases, the violence from protesters appeared to be either in self-defense or vastly outweighed by the violence directed at them. But that doesn't get written up. Granted, this is based on his reading Ackled's description of each incident, which are only a paragraph or two long. But here are a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. Right. This is these are amazing paragraphs. April 20th, 30th, April, 2024. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators continued their encampment at Dixon Plaza at UC UCLA shortly before midnight around 100 pro-Israel counter demonstrators wearing black outfits and white masks removed barriers separating the two demonstrations, attempted to tear down the encampment, attacked the demonstrators throwing fireworks, tear gas, tear gas and debris into the encampment, spraying like chemicals. Brain chemicals at demonstrators. Well, no, it was Zaka and it was it was IDF uh, aligned people also. Oh, it was IDF aligned. Okay. Yeah, and it was it was like Doctor Phil's buddies were were out there. That guy Aaron, whatever. We actually had a video of this guy <laughs> bragging about how he just did this. Spraying chemicals like the skunk at demonstrators, <sighs> like they spray at Palestinians that are worshiping. Right. Beating up a student journalist and an editor with the Daily Bruin, striking demonstrators with wooden slabs, and we saw that they were like hitting them with pallets. Right and yelling anti-Palestinian and anti-African slurs, pro-Palestine demonstrators fought to keep counter-demonstrators away from their barricades. UC Davis said 25 demonstrators were taken to the hospital after the attack. How many of the, of the pro-Israel demonstrators were? I would guess that probably none. Right. Um, right. Unless they hit themselves. But this one is the crazy one. So on, on April 30th, some 80 some pro-Palestinian Demonstrators encamped at the main gate at the University of Arizona in Tucson. I think actually um, Heidi Benner might have even been there. But late in the night, dozens of police in riot gear stormed the encampment, firing rubber bullets, tear gas, and this. pepper balls to disperse the encampment. We got video of that. We showed that a few weeks yeah. ago, too. We did, um, too. I did, too. Students threw water bottles and pushed back against the police line. And I wanted to have this like basically up on every slide. But literally, this is what the graph looks like of, okay, you know, here you go, shit libs. You really want to think that, <laughs> that they were, and, and not, not just the shit libs, but the Trumpers, especially. Because the Trumpers, they, yes. They need the narrative to be that this, that the protests were violent and that the, yeah. the first of all, they're all cop suckers. They're all cop suckers. All right. And on top okay. of the fact that they yeah. love the IDF because the IDF supports the cops. Yeah. Well, right. they're Zionists. They're Christian Zionists. So, yeah. Well, exactly. Just, but what's a, over 98%. All right. Here's the data 1,183 peaceful protests and 22 not peaceful protests, of which 20 were instigated by the cops. Right. right. And, and, and so that's Steve Semler talking about this. And I also wanted to give a special shout out to our friend Nuno. Um, he pointed out that speaking of the college protests, the New York district attorney three days ago. I was just going to say they dropped charges, right? Is they sure did. They dropped the charges yeah. against the pro-Palestine protesters. 
30 of the Columbia protesters, right? Right. So those are the last 30 is what he said. When Zionists say that these ter- these are terrorists and violent, reality is they're not. They're standing up against the unspeakable violence being committed against Palestinians. For once, law has stood on the right side against Israeli bullying. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Manhattan DA drops charges against 30 Columbia protesters arrested because, get this, prosecutor cites a lack of evidence, a lack of criminal history, and uh, internet uh, or intel discipline of the Columbia is a decision to dismiss trespassing cases. So basically it came from inside Columbia to just drop these charges. Basically, you know, and, and they had already, at least DA, Columbia had done enough that the DA is like, look, I don't need the prose- prosecution. Prosecute and press charges. I don't know if you saw, but the people at Columbia, we covered this too. They had their own graduation. It was beautiful. Yes, it inside, was. It was beautiful. Yeah. Inside a cathedral. It was it was stunning. And they they had their own thing. They're just like, screw you, administration. We're going to do it ourselves. And I, I love them for that. Uh, all right. Let's see what's going on with chat. Say, oh, chat? goodness. Rabbi Shmuley. No, no, not Shmuley. Shmuley's here. Shmuley, no, no, we don't have one, Rabbi. Shmuley oh, stops Heidi. by my streams occasionally, too. <laughs> Heidi says that she never did end up going to the protests there in Tucson. She had told me about them, and she knew people that were there for sure. 